Can a six inch from a white zone see any deep sky stuff? Let's get to it. Hey guys, you know it's Joe Jaguar and Joey, okay? And your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescope, well, we hope one of them, at least. Right, Joey? Right? Okay. So, here's what I'm going to show you guys today. Here's the Skywatcher Heritage 6-inch with the star sense. I got some mic pieces, my camera tripod, the camera, and there's the SV Boney. Uh, 225 AZ mount. We're going to, to the park. Hey guys, so we're gonna walk to the park. I know there's not a lot of people that would get a buggy, put their telescope, tripod, eyepieces. Uh, it's only about a half a block to the park, but I know, you know, it's February and there's a lot of people that won't even go observing past October, which is a shame because, you know, there's a lot of amazing stuff out there in the winter. But if you guys can do whatever it takes, even if you're, you know, a little lazy, even if you don't feel like to, you know, make yourself go out there because at least you're doing something in the hobby. Basically go around the uh, sun 50 times maximum if you're lucky. So go, go out there and observe. You know, it's not that big of a deal. You just make a commitment and go. Today is the fifth clear day in Ontario, or at least in the GTA. So, if you guys are out there and you're not observing, then I don't know what to tell you. You just got to commit yourself, force yourself. It's like going to the gym. Just do it. We'll be back. Okay, so I'm at the schoolyard here. I mean, there's Ceres right there. Can you see or the Orion? And then there's Jupiter. Uh, I can't really see Saturn. Should be still available. So Anyway, <laughs> back to what I was saying. So I didn't realize it's quite this bad over here. And that's because all those trees, and if you can see the trees, in the summer actually blocks half of that light out. It's not perfect, but it does block it more. Now in the winter when there's no leaves, it's actually not so dark. Here. There is another park, half a block north, but I chose this one, so maybe I should just stick to it and see. Okay guys, so I'm all set up as you can see and with the Heritage because it's a reflecting telescope I had to put the tripod half lower where it's a refractor you're gonna put it like much higher so only took five minutes got a little darker I did forget one thing since I'm using star sense here I need this phone that I'm recording on here to find stuff which then means I can't record so unfortunately I'll have to um, use it and then when I'm done I'll tell you what uh, stuff I looked at uh, definitely I'm gonna look at like the Orion Nebula and uh, you know like the Running Man Nebula you can't see the Nebula but from the, any telescope you can see there's a like a little cluster of it there's a cluster above the Orion Nebula one below there's M41 Jupiter is blazing right now uh, the Pleiades is out I think I can just see it from here, even though the flash is kind of blinding me. The Hades, uh, there's M36, 7 and 8. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. At least this view here, I got a 360 view, but there is a lot of school lights that's over there. If it wasn't for those, it'd be decent, because I remember in the summer, it wasn't too bad. But, you know, you have to do the best you can with these things, guys, and that's it. You'll never have the best opportunity all the time. Sometimes you go to amazing dark skies like I did several times and it's not clear. So it's clear, you enjoy. Uh, it's, not, it's not super cold, it's uh, February, but we've had a warm spell. I think today was about plus three uh, in the GTA Ontario. So we're having a really nice winter. Uh, you know, other people will say, well, that's uh, the climate change for you, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a little coolish because it's nighttime, but there's lots of stuff to see. It should be dark enough. But anyway, again, 
I will tell you what I looked at and I'm either gonna tell you if it was easy, medium, hard, or impossible. So those are the four categories I'm gonna break it to. Can a six inch, uh, you know, see deep sky objects from a white zone or a Bordeaux zone eight? Now, if you go to a darker site, you'll see more. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna take the phone now and I'm gonna use it and then uh, I guess I'll see you guys after. Hey guys, so that's it. That was about only 50 minutes. But you know what? 50 minutes is fine. If you spend an hour, 45 minutes, whatever you do, at least you're doing something in the hobby. But you know what? With the star sense, you'd be surprised how many things that you can hit. Now, I didn't bring a paper and pen. I have to try to do everything by memory. So I hope I remember everything so I can tell you guys. Um, but just so far, I think there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do from a with a six inch in a Bordeaux zone eight or a white zone. Even with all these ambient lights, it's not as bad as my front yard with all those street lights hitting in your face. But uh, surprisingly, you could do some decent stuff. Now remember you're going to scratch off almost all galaxies off your list and almost all nebulas too. But uh, there's still a lot of like open clusters that you can see with a six inch even like this, that's portable. And uh, yeah, so when we get home, as you can see all those lights, all those lights over there. So if it was truly dark, you could probably even see more. Now the only problem is, when you do this type of thing, once you get cold, because even though I got gloves, to touch the focuser, to, you know, do some certain stuff, to move stuff, uh, sometimes I just need to do it bare hands. The, the gloves are too thick to use, you know what I mean? But anyway, let's wait till we get home and I'm gonna try to remember everything that I pointed to, if it was easy or not so easy, and will you see it? And remember too. Even if you're in a white zone, a six inch can work. But the most important thing is you have to get away from all those street lights or light sources. And you'll be surprised what you can do. In the summer, if you ever go camping and that type of thing, then you can look for that, you know, nebulas and galaxies there. Now, it's not gonna look like the photos, but at least you will see it. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few. Okay guys, let's get to this. Again, I apologize, I needed, this time I needed my two cell phones, one for the app and then one to record, and I forgot it, but that's what happens. As I was saying, at the park or at the schoolyard, not everything will go your way, you just gotta make the best out of it. Anyway, so let's go through it. I was actually pretty surprised how many things I could see. Now, those school street lights were about 100 meters away, I would say. So not as close as mine. So they weren't blasting in my face. So for my backyard, um, still a lot better because they were a lot further. So the intensity is less. Okay, so the first thing, I just aligned on Jupiter. That was easy. Um, I didn't really look at Jupiter because again, Jupiter is anywhere. We're talking about deep sky objects. So we looked at M42, which is the Orion Nebula. Very easy in a six inch in a white zone. Two clusters, one above the Orion Nebula, one below. I believe it's called 19, uh, NGC 1973. And I think the other one's called uh, 1999. Both of them are extremely easy in the six inch, it was no problem. So then I took a look at M41. Uh, which is in the constellation Canis Major, which is the big dog. Easy, okay, the Hades cluster. Easy with the 32 millimeter eyepiece. The Pleiades star cluster, again, extremely easy with a 32 millimeter eyepiece. Then I went to M35 in the Gemini constellation. That one was a bit dim. It was, you could see it, medium to in between hard. It wasn't so bright, but you could see it. Um, with a bigger scope, you easily see it, or maybe if there was no ambient light, we could have seen it. 
the double cluster. I would say easy. It was pretty distinct. Uh, had no problem. If memory serves me correct, M36 is the, the dimmest of the three. So that one was hard. But the other two were uh, M37 was uh, medium and medium from M38. Okay. Andromeda Galaxy. That was easy, but again, it was just a little hint, and it was just the core. But you could just tell it's a fuzzy patch. No question was Andromeda, but very disappointing view. But you can see it with a six inch, so okay. M44, the Beehive Cluster, easy. I did M50. And that one, I would say, is hard. I can't really recall anything else off the top of my head. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the map and see if there was anything specific. But I don't think so. I don't think there was anything else. I don't think there was anything else that popped into my head that uh, I wanted to look at. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, so I'm actually surprised that if you get a six inch reflecting telescope and you get either star sense or astro hopper um, you can see a lot of this stuff now mind you a lot of the stuff i'm talking about is open clusters but what's nice is a lot of them are you know some are dense some are rich some are open some are dispersed there's so many nice ones thinking the hercules cluster you could see it but it's probably going to be dim but you could probably see the owl cluster. You could probably see the J cluster or uh, the coat hangers. It's uh, called, uh, I call it the J because it looks like a J and my name is J, right? It starts with a J. But um, so there's still a ton of stuff. Now, this is only the one season or one part of the season. Uh, there's still probably a whole bunch of stuff that could be seen. So a six inch can do deep sky stuff. Most of that stuff is going to be open clusters. However, there's probably a few other things that you could see if you can get fully dark adapted with no type of lights anywhere that will help a bit too but a six inch is not a very big telescope um, they normally say if you want to see deep sky objects fairly well you need to start with a minimum of eight inch and bigger so a six inch gets you almost there so if that is what you guys are looking at especially the beginners uh, or if this is your first telescope, maybe a second telescope, and you had something that was uh, like just a piece of junk before, and you want to jump to the medium range or the intermediate range, then a six inch can do you. Don't expect anything like the photographs, right? You're not going to get that, but you will see some stuff. And open clusters are, there's thousands of those, and you, there's a lot that you will see, even from a this type of uh, environment or light pollution zone so if that's what you have and that's all you could afford then don't worry this is a nice step um you know what i mean and uh, just have fun of course if you can go bigger like to an eight inch that will improve things so whatever you can see in the six will be about 50 percent brighter and then those things that were at the threshold will not be at the threshold it'll be a little bit more brighter but still galaxies and most nebulas are still and i would say oh uh, globular clusters should still wait till you get to a zone four or better anyway guys joe jaguar like comment and subscribe if you know anybody getting into the hobby share my channel with them a few guys on the forums if maybe somebody's asked a question like this if you want to share my link that'd be great and uh, I do have members video, depending when you see this. At the time of recording, I'm up to about four, four members. Thank you, guys. Uh, it does help. It's only 99 cents. I do a video specifically just for you guys once a month. Plus, I'll put your name in the description. It helps the channel grow since I don't make anything really except the AdSense, which isn't a lot. See you on the next video. Why not you? Why not me?